Alright, you guys here another project uh, we're going to start. Uh, this uh, this project came to us, uh, we were at a show this weekend, and uh, one of my subscribers, uh, Kai Samuelson, he's a, a young kid and he's just getting into the, the hobby. He gave this to me, you know, because uh, I think he, he realized it might be over his head, and I'm kind of glad he, he did decide that because sometimes... You know, a young guy will get a, a project and they'll, they'll they'll hack it up trying to get things out and like this one here, me and his dad were trying to figure out how this pulley was on, you know. And and I told him I says usually usually have like an Allen screw or something like that. But then I thought maybe the the shroud came off, you know, and we couldn't figure it out. But then I, after I took a better look at it, let me see. I realized that uh, there were actually threads, threads on that pulley. So the pulleys, they're actually using this big pulley as a nut to hold that on. So uh, that might come right off. But uh, yeah, this engine has uh, quite a few issues too. You know, so just just from basically looking at it, Kai gave me. He said there's some uh, bolts here to go with it. That actually says Lawson, and they're just uh, seven sixteenths, half inch seven sixteenths. And it looks like this this engine has all the bolts holding the shroud on, so this this actually might belong to his Lawson. He has a few engines. I think he said he had uh, he he had the Lawson he was telling me about. He's working on a Maytag and a Satley, and uh, I think he has a Montgomery Wards too. So he's. Uh, He's going. He's gung ho. He's going. Going pretty uh, steady on this uh, hobby of his. But getting back to the engine, got some welds here so that this little foot was broken off one time, and then got big blobs of weld here. So that makes you you think it through a rod, or maybe it was dropped. I don't know. You know, you you never know with these old engines. That's cast iron. That block. So. Throwing a rod, I guess. I guess you could put a hole in it. And let's see. This other foot here is uh, welded on. But uh, just, just my quick look at it. You know, it's it's missing a muffler, so that's that's uh, maybe five hours. Missing the carburetor hat. I think these are the old acorns, and. Uh, that could be uh, that could be up to twenty bucks. Missing the gas tank. That's probably another twenty bucks. Uh, spark plug. You know that's nothing here to the wire. But just at a quick look, he probably would have had to put another uh, thirty forty dollars into this to make it a good engine. And the gas line they had a, they had a brass gas line on that's missing. But. Uh, for me, I can make the gas tank, and I probably have an air filter sitting around, so it won't cost nothing. Say, I'm off. I got that sitting around, so I'm kind of glad he gave this to me. You know, this is I've, I've never gone into a, a reduction gear. I've had them, but I've never gone into them. And this one here looks like it might need a bearing. So, uh, yeah, I think the, the crankshaft on these just goes to about here, and has a big gear on it, and then. Uh, there's another little shaft, so like I say, it's probably just a bearing there. But anyway, I want to thank Kai for this. Kai uh, doesn't have a channel, so uh, I'm not going to leave a link or anything. But uh, a lot of you guys probably see his uh, comments and his name down there. So thanks a lot for this engine, Kai. I'm gonna I'm gonna get it wrong. I'm gonna make it right. So uh, I'm gonna make it proud of me, buddy. And uh, I want to thank a few other guys that stopped by the, the show and uh, check us out again. Uh, Ed and his son, Eddie, he left the donation. And he stayed and he, he helped us. Uh, we're having problems with the Missy over here, the, the hit and miss. And he, uh, he stuck with us for about an hour, hour and a half and, and held the light on. It was not at nighttime. And uh, he helped us try to get that running. It was an ignition problem. It's something we couldn't have fixed time it was a part but uh, we appreciate him the donation and, and the help I think he enjoyed it little Eddie enjoyed it 
And Rob, our buddy Rob, he, he left us another donation. He always stops by every show and uh, helps us out. So uh, we appreciate all that. So let me uh, put the camera down and uh, maybe we'll take this off and uh, see what's going on. You know, a lot of people, uh, I get a lot of comments on uh, why, why do you start another project when you, when you didn't finish another one? Well, that's what we do. You know, we, we usually have a couple projects going at once. Like right now, we've got the scooter project going. But I can't work on that right now because uh, I need a, a plate. I'm going to want a di an aluminum diamond plate uh, sta stand on. And that, that's what uh, all the gears are going to hook, hook up to and the jack shaft and, and the motor is going to sit on. So the, the steel place is uh, 30 miles away. That's a 60 mile round trip. And I might not be going there for a month or so, you know. And I could work on the engine because uh, I do. Here's the crankshaft for it, and I have to mill that down and put that on the lathe and cut it down. But uh, right now I don't have two hours to work on that. But I do have a half hour to assess this motor and see what's going on with it. So I could play with this while we're waiting on parts and stuff like that. You know, because I get a lot of comments. Uh, what happened to that engine? What happened to this? What you know? That's just the way we uh, roll around here. So, All right, let me get a tripod and uh, we'll start taking this apart. You know, at first look, it doesn't seem like it has very much compression. You know, it's. I don't think it's a valve because I could actually hear something going on in there. You know, so I don't think it's a stuck valve. But we'll check it out. Might just be uh, bad rings or something. It does have a nameplate on here, but somebody put a piece of plexiglass on it to cover it, and it looks like it, it might be broke on the side here, and that's why they did that. It don't look like the plexiglass held up, so that, that, not, that uh, happened a while ago. But it's nice that they, they saved the plate, so we'll take that off and, and see what that is. Another thing here, I've seen some marks on the flywheel, or the, the pulley here, and up here. And uh, somebody was probably seeing what the ratio was. I think the ratio on these was uh, six, six to one. Yeah, I got the light on. You guys don't need that. But uh, let's see. I don't know if you can see that. There's, there's the mark. We're lining the marks up. And spin the flywheel. Let me see if I can get in a good position. Maybe, maybe we can't. Let me come around here. All right, that's better. Maybe you could. Oh, I'll keep switching from side to side. There's one, two, three, four, five. Now this is going to be the last one, six, and we should see that. Here comes the mark now. It's not exactly where six would be, but uh, it's close enough. So it is actually a six to one ratio. All right, let's uh, let's put you up on a stand there and see if we can. Uh, we'll take a look at the head, maybe take the valves off, take the carburetor off, so we can see all this, and uh, see if we can get this pulley off, so we can uh, see if it has a spark. All right. Yeah, I can't see or read the tag, uh, but Kai did a little research. He must he must have been able to look at or see it somehow. He says he says it's a, a, an NR6 model N, and the R stands for reduction. So it's a six NR6. He says we'll see if he's right. I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure myself. So uh, we'll see when we take it off. All right. I guess first thing uh, let me see if we can take this carburetor off. Huh? That's pretty loose. find a slot. Alright. Yeah, this looks like it's been worked on quite a bit over the years. Okay. Got that out of the way. Alright, let me get some wrench it well. I think next Take the plug out 
and just peek in there and then we'll take that off. This is just so, I like to look in there so uh, if you see anything that might get damaged, you know, when you're working on it. You actually see the piston in the top, top of the cylinder and stuff, you know. And it looks like it's uh, it's pretty clean. Like somebody somebody's been in there. There's absolutely no carbon, so this head's been off. Doesn't look like it's been off recently. Somebody might have tried and rebuild this and uh, just gave up on it. But uh, all right, let's try and get this uh, pulley off here. Okay. Usually on these older engines, the, they have a reverse thread on them, but from my experience, if they have a pulley on them or something like that, they got a regular thread, so I'm just going to stick this in there and see if, we can, uh, see if it loosens up. to get something to try and hold the other the other side here because uh, it's moving okay sometimes uh, if you put something in the spark plug like a rag or something that'll that'll tighten it up enough to get that so let me try that all right yeah we got it loose and uh, I was wrong it did have a reverse thread you know I said that usually when they have a pulley on there they don't so I tried loosening the other way and all I was doing was tighten it. So then I tried this way. I didn't do nothing with that. I didn't, I, I didn't put a rag in the, in the head or nothing. What I did is I, I put this uh, the chain wrench. I'll show you when I get that. When, I, when we get down here, I'll show you. I got the chain wrench holding the pulley. And then I, I clamped down the engine because we, every time you uh, moved it, it would lift the engine up. So I got this and I, and I bolted it. I, I clamped it down to this bolt up here. I know I didn't want to do it to the legs because I know, you know, they're pretty pretty fragile. So then what I did is I, I took this and while everything was in there, I, I knocked it back this way and then sure enough it loosened it right up. So looks like it's a little cattywampus. But I think that's in the pulley. Hmm. Now I'll be able to get all this stuff off. Interesting. Yeah, this thing's been beat to death for a while. You know, it's got little indents here and stuff like that, so maybe before we uh, put it back on, we'll, we'll flatten it out and mill it right. All right, let's go have lunch now. We'll come back. All right, we're back. All right, before we take the shroud off or the head around like that, I think I'm going to take this uh, big pulley off. You know, this, this engine here is a cast iron engine. This is close to 60 pounds without this uh, gear reduction on there. And this pulley, so this this engine here is probably about 80 pounds right now. So that'll, that'll make it easier to carry around or maneuver, I should say. Here's that uh, chain wrench that I used. It says $10 on there. I think this is probably the first time I used it. And it's been, been hanging on my wall probably for five years or longer. But uh, it's an interesting, interesting company here, Diamond Tool and Horseshoe Company. You know, I got a couple of uh, adjustable wrenches from them. I don't think they're around anymore. They might be called Diamond Tool now, but uh, it's a horseshoe company. Interesting. And then I also use these clamps. If you guys ever get a chance or you see these clamps at a flea market, like here's one I paid five dollars for, a six inch clamp. Man, I use them all the time. And I just picked this one up recently. This one it says ten dollars. I know I didn't pay that, but they're both they're both six inch clamps, but uh, one is twice as heavy as the other. You know, this one here doesn't say where it's made or have a name on it, but uh, it's well made. And this one here is real real heavy duty. It's a Williams, made in the United States, drop forged. 
but I seen something funny on the other side here. Some of you guys might this might tickle a few. Of you. It's a it's a deep throat clamp. Williams deep throat. Who would have thought they'd put that on a clamp? All right, some guys might find that amusing. All right, let's uh, let's take this pulley off. All right, let's try and take this pulley out. Oh, you got lucky there. I thought it was gonna be. Somebody must have had this apart because uh, all these screws and stuff are uh, pretty loose. All right, we got two Allen screws on here. Figures can't get it on. I expected them to be tight. I probably was holding it on. Alright, I'm gonna take these all the way up. That way there's no question about if it's hanging up or not. Let's get a little hammer on that. If not, we'll have to get polar. Coming. Ah. Oh, Let me get some earplugs. It's getting pretty loud in here. All right, we're back. Let me beat that off, so to speak, and uh, we'll get back to you. All right, yeah, it came right off. That'll uh, lighten things up considerably. Wow, that uh, it weighs about a uh, good six, six to eight pounds. Long key too. All right, let's. There's uh, a shift. Hmm. Okay, let's. Uh, Take off the shroud and see what's going on there. Alright, let's uh, let's take the shroud off here. Four bolts. I'm peeking in here as I'm talking to you guys and I already see another problem. Somebody uh, somebody busted off about the uh, from what I could see, maybe six, seven fins. So it needs a flywheel. That would be another uh, 20 bucks. And uh, that's neat. It's uh, brass. Somebody use a brass bolt. I know that ain't factory. Another one. Another brass bolt. All right. You guys ready? Another brass bolt. Huh. What we got here? Oh yeah, yay! The shroud's actually in pretty good shape. Excellent shape, really. No dents. Oh, here's. Uh, let's see what we got here on the plate. Let's see how Kai did. <clears throat> That's right. NR6. I'll have to look them numbers up. Uh, see exactly what year it is. From the carburetor. It looks like it might be an early one. So, oh wow. Got a one, two, three. Got three fins missing down here. Two fins up here and one up here. It's a shame. Shame when people do that. Got a little play. That's not bad at all. It's missing the governor. I don't, I'm not sure. 
That don't even look like it belongs there. And this here is all hacked up. It's got the. Uh, you got some kind of uh, funky screws in there, countersunk, probably wood screws or something, but uh, that's not right. That's all messed up. They got this solder on there. You're not supposed to solder that wire on there because you'll mess up the coil. And then I'm looking at the backing plate here, and the, the backing plate looks cracked. And even, you know what? I'm telling you, I'm telling you stuff that's going on, and you're on the you're on the other side of the motor. I mean, uh, let me take it off of here for a second. Sorry about that. Okay, where you guys at? Uh, here's the governor governor linkage here. It's missing that, missing the it has a little vein that goes on there. But uh, you see, we have that. that. If you had to buy that, that would be another uh, at least ten dollars. Don't know if the coil's any good because uh, they got it soldered. But uh, let me see if I can get a close up on these screws. Yeah. yeah, this thing's been hacked up, but uh, we'll fix hacked up stuff before. Here's the shroud I was telling, or the, the backing plate is cracked. So we got we got them too. I mean, that's 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 another ten bucks. So you know, so far I don't know how many how much you're up to, but uh, probably fifty sixty dollars in parts this would have taken. All right, let's uh, take the flywheel off. See what's behind here. All right, before I take this off, I just noticed something. I was moving this, and it seemed like excessive play, so I think I'm going to take the head off first, the way I have the flywheel I use to play with that. But let me get this uh, out of the way, the shroud, because you know if there's some kind of sharp object sticking up like that, I'm going to find it, and sure enough, Road King found it right through his pinky. So let me get it out of the way before somebody gets hurt. I think somebody, somebody's been into this, and uh, probably wasn't too long ago. Everything's just too clean. There's no grease on this at all. Oh! I don't know what's going on here. Wow. It's, uh, I don't know if that's snapped or stripped, but uh, chances are it's probably still in here. Road King didn't uh, bust it though. <clears throat> okay, now we're gonna look at this together. Even the head, the head's got a, a weld on there. Yeah, this thing, yeah, this thing's probably been used and abused. So, oh, wow. The piston says over 30 on it, so it's been bored out before. Huh. The valves are working. They seem okay. Oh yeah, it's a busted out bolt there. No worries, no worries, we'll get it. All right, let me get my uh, my tool. We'll take that flywheel off. All right, before we go any further, I'll show you what's on top here. There we go. I'm starting to focus in now. See that point zero three L? That's uh, they call it thirty over. You have uh, 10 over, 20 over, and 30 over. So this, I don't know if they went straight to 30. You know, if you got a big gouge in it, you bore it out 30 over. But if not, you know, you usually start with a 10, and then after you bore it a second time, you know, you go to 20 over. But uh, I think it's as far as you can go before you have to sleeve something. All right, but uh, it's uh, the, the piston is tight. I can't move the piston side to side, so that's good. It does have a little oil in there, so. 
All right, let's put you back up here and uh, take the flywheel off and take this uh, this mess off here. All right, yeah, this flywheel shouldn't shouldn't be too much to take off because it's probably been off recently. But uh, I actually need three hands here, so I'll just I'll sort of jam this in there, shove it in there, and then uh, we'll try this. There we go. Good job, fellas. Got a new flywheel key. Let's see if it has any date on this thing. I don't see it. Let me check over here. Oh, wow. It says 1941, I think. All right, let me double check that. Let me clean it up. All right. Yeah, the flywheel has a 41 on here. And a C, so that would be uh, February, March, be March 1941. That doesn't necessarily mean that this engine is in 1941. You know, I, I go by the serial number and uh, check that out. You know, I mean, this from the looks of this engine, this flywheel could have been changed ten times for all we know. But uh, the flywheel, wow. Well, the flywheel itself is uh, 1941. All right, let's continue on. All right. This video is probably getting a little long, so uh, we'll stop it here and then start another one. And uh, I, I checked the numbers, and sure enough, it's uh, 1941 from March 1941. So uh, the numbers were good. I noticed something about this flywheel here. Here's one I was going to put on. I was going to use this one. This is off a newer one, probably a 1952 or something. But uh, anyway, this. This one actually has a steel insert. I've never seen that before. And it must have something to do with the, the reduction gear and the counterweights and stuff like that because I've worked on earlier engines and they've all had the same flywheel like this. See this? I don't know what it's made out of, but uh, it's, not, it's not steel. You know, it don't have an insert, you know. This is, uh, this is a earth magnet I have here. It's not sticking to anything. And like I say, this is this is all steel in here. So they they did that for a reason, you know. So we're probably going to reuse this. Them fins missing aren't going to make a difference. I mean, it's it's not going to throw it out of balance. It's only going to be a show engine, and there's plenty of fins on there to to still keep it cool. So we'll go with that. As a matter of fact, this. Uh, the flywheel is actually about a pound heavier. I got my little scale here. It's cooking up. There we go. All right. That one here is five pounds, four ounces. So uh, that's pretty hefty. And this one's only uh, four point one pounds. So it's uh, <clears throat> it's a lot lighter. So we're not going to use that. We, we'll use this one. So that's where we're at. All right, we're going to shut this one down and uh, start another one. So enough of this. All right, before we go, I have the plate here, and here are the numbers in case you guys want to check them out. The type is uh, two zero five zero eight one. The model is NR six, and there's a serial number there. 2503. This is this is a very early engine. Yeah, they. Uh, I think they started making them in 1940 to 1954. You have to check on that. But when you guys check these numbers now, make sure you the serial number. Don't confuse the serial number with the type. All right. All right.